uh, Joaquin said, in this talk, I, I'm going to explain the workflow that we follow to decide uh, which methods uh, will be applied uh, in the observatory network. So probably, as uh, most of you know, uh, when we estimate density, which is the number of animals or individuals per area, let's say individuals per square kilometer or individuals uh, per square meter or whatever units, uh, there are many different options that depends on the environment, the species, and many other factors. For instance, uh, we can talk about uh, total counts, uh, line transit, and then apply distance sampling, capture or capture uh, family of methods, genetics, drive counts, and many others. But um, if we uh, focus on camera traps, let's say that we have two main groups of methods when we are thinking about uh, or when we are interested in estimate population density. We can work uh, with methods with, uh, with, sorry, with individual identification, which is the capture capture. So we know that uh, this is the wild war one or whatever is the name and wild war two or fox one and fox two. But when this uh, individual identification is not possible, we can work with the family of, uh, and market method. So, um, <clears throat> uh, if we uh, focus on those methods with individual identification, so again, capture reduction methods, there are two main important uh, issues or points. The, the, the ecology of the species, mainly the, the movement patterns, home range and, and movement behavior determines the study design. And why? This is because each individual in our population, for, for instance, let's say that each lynx in our population should have a probability of being captured in more than one uh, camera trap in this case. So what, again, what does this mean? This means that imagine that this is the home range of uh, one lynx in our study area. So at least we have to set two cameras inside of the home range of these individuals and again, and the same idea with the home range of uh, these other individuals in our population. And additionally, obviously, if we talk about capture and recapture, we need to individually uh, identify animals. This is possible in links, for instance, because of the uh, specific sport pattern in, in the body of each animal, but if uh, I show you this nice photo of, the, of this red squirrel, and, in a, and if I cast, ask you if this individual is uh, the same of this individual in this second photo, nobody knows, I don't know, and you probably don't know if, or at least we're not sure if this uh, animal is the same that this other one animal. And in fact, if uh, we review the, the mammals in Europe, and here I saw a couple of pictures of some of them, and we can see hares, uh, rabbits, badger, foxes ungulates and even carnivores like wolves or bears and so on, we see that most of them, and I know that there are many uh, other species, but most of them is not possible to individually identify animals. Only in some of them, for instance, the genet in South uh, Europe, the wildcat or again the lynx, uh, they have this sport and particular pattern that allow the individual identification. And obviously, we always have the possibility to capture individuals, for instance, like this whale boar, and then mark with tags, uh, with tags uh, or collars or whatever, any marks that uh, allow us to individually identify the animals. And potentially, uh, when we talk about ungulates, we can try to identify the animals, especially the males in roe deer, in red deer, uh, in fallow deer. Uh, using the, the antlers, okay? But in any case, if we talk about uh, these ungulates, we are we will be focused only on males. And if we talk about, or if we think about to capture and mark animals, we need to do a high uh, human effort and usually economic uh, effort to capture and mark, let's say five, 10 or 15 individuals in our population. So coming back of some idea that uh, Joaquin already explained, if we go to the website of the observatory, uh, we see that in this case, we are focusing in mammals. So we are not only focusing one species, 
And again, we are focused in, in wildlife. So if we want to apply capture recapture methods in the community of mammals in our study area, we need to capture 10 or 15 whale boars, we need to capture 10 or 15 foxes, and uh, we need to capture 10 or 15 wolves to identify these uh, unmarked species and then apply uh, the method to estimate population density or abundance. As this approach is quite uh, expensive and time consuming, we decide, and coming back to this uh, slide again, we decide to work with methods <clears throat> that allow the, the estimation of population density without the need of uh, individual identification. And here you have a screenshot of a really nice paper, which is quite recent. Refer recent in, in, in fact, it was published in 2019. And here you have a nice review of all the uh, uh, market methods that have been described in the, in the last years. The main idea, uh, in my opinion, is that most of these methods are quite similar and have a similar assumption. So let's say that the design should be random. Uh, we assume perfect detection in some of the edge of the field of view of the cameras. And the, experiment, and the experimental design, in fact, allow us to apply different methods with the same distribution or regular grids or random designs of camera traps there. And uh, we will discuss that later on, but think, uh, I think that the important point here is to know that uh, when we apply the methods that uh, we are going to describe and to discuss this morning, we are able to apply more than one unmarked methods, okay? And here you have a screenshot of some of them, some of these methods uh, to estimate population, uh, density population without the need of individual identification. There are many others, and there are in fact others that are coming, but here we have, let's say, a good representative sample of some of them. And uh, for instance, in, in this uh, in this study, what we did is to compare three of these methods. In this case, the random encounter model, the random encounter and staging time, and the camera trap distance sampling. And what we saw uh, is that the results were more or less uh, equivalent between all these methods in terms of accuracy and also in terms of precision. And again, I repeat, the nice point probably is that with the same experimental design, we were able to apply different methods and we can discuss in which uh, scenarios is more uh, recommended to apply some, some of them or, or the other. So um, here we have a, a plot about these three methods that we apply in the, in the paper that I showed you before. The REM formula I want to explain later uh, on properly. So, uh, I don't want to explain it now. The REH formula, essentially, in these methods consider the amount of time, which is the staging time that the individuals spend in a uh, area of the detection zone in which we assume perfect detection. And then when we apply camera trap distance sampling, which is an adaptation of the uh, point sampling, uh, distance sampling, the, the traditional one, we estimate the distance between the cameras and the animals, and then we estimate a probability, a probability of detection in, in the detection zone or in the field of view of, of our cameras. <clears throat> in any case, and again, this is a really important idea for today, is that for most of the unmarked methods, the key information that we need is to locate the animals in the field of view of the camera. So let's say that, for instance, to each capture of fox or wild boar or any species in general, we need to uh, estimate like a coordinates, X and Y coordinates of the animals in the field of view of our cameras. Okay, And then with this location or with this coordinate, we then estimate a different parameter like could be speed, like could be distance or any others. And then we finally uh, estimate population density. But the point, uh, the most important thing is to uh, understand that we need to individual to uh, sorry to identify the location of the of the animals in the field of view. Okay, so uh, 
in this uh, workshop and for the first years of the European Observatory, we decide to mainly work with the random encounter model. But again, remember that with the design that uh, we will show today, you can apply other methods, but we will be focused in random encounter model. And why uh, we are focused in this method? So uh, recently we published uh, this paper, which in fact is in the proof editing process, but I think that should be uh, uh, available online soon. We review uh, all the random encounter model studies published since 2008, and eight, sorry, when the method uh, was described to 2022, and we review and we review all the studies that apply these methods against other independent density estimates est uh, estimated with uh, distance sampling or capture recapture or other methods, and we add we additionally also uh, analyze other population in in Spain. But here the Let's say that uh, this is a graphical abstract. We compare the, the REM densities, this uh, axis, against these uh, reference densities, you know, estimated with other independent methods. And we see that uh, the results were, in general, here we have many, you know, uh, more than 40 species in different environments around the world and, and so on. We, know, we see that the results were quite uh, equivalent. So, Coming back to the uh, REM formula, <clears throat> we have three main parameters to estimate population density. The first one is the encounter rate. So this is the number of individuals detected per sampling unit. So let's say that we detect uh, one fox per camera day or two well bars per camera day and so on. Then we have a parameter, a parameter related with the movement patterns of the of the population, which is the day range, which is the distance traveled by an individual by one individual during the day. So, for instance, I don't know, five kilometers per day, twenty kilometers per day, or whatever. And finally, the last parameter or group of parameters is the detection zone. So, this is the the area in which the camera effectively detects animals. So how far are our cameras to detect, uh, again, a whale board, a fox, a rabbit, or whatever. So, the, and obviously, this is defined by the radius of detection and also by the angle uh, of detection. And with uh, these three K parameters, we finally estimate the, uh, the population density, which is, as I said before, the number of individuals per unit area. So this is the formula, but now I'm going to explain the method in a, in a more uh, visual way, I hope. So uh, here I simulate, let's say, the movement of two animals, one blue, another red. We have the study area and we have uh, a regular grid of, camera, of cameras, which is these uh, white points. And as you can see here, the blue animal here, you see, uh, uh, was detected in one of our cameras. Okay, so we have two animals, a set of regular camera, uh, a regular distribution of cameras, and one encounter of the blue of the blue one. Okay, so taking in mind uh, this GIF, uh, I, I only simulated two animals, but imagine that instead of simulated only two animals, I simulated more. Obviously, makes sense to think that if we simulate 15 animals, for sure we will have more encounters, okay? So more animals, more encounters, or more photos, let's say, if you prefer. And if you remember in the movement of the of these uh, two animals, the red one and the blue one uh, was quite limited in the in the study area, but imagine that I, poof, the, I uh, move these animals around the study area, so a longer uh, movement patterns, Probably, uh, or the probability of being captured in any of the cameras is higher. It's not the same to move, let's say, in a, a small home range and uh, a small uh, travel distance. So in this case, we have less uh, encounters or less photo. But if the animals move longer distance through the steady area, we will have 
uh, more photos in the same camera or in different cameras. OK, so with those with uh, these two K concepts, the the number of photos related with the number of animals and the number of photos or encounters related with the movement patterns of the population. Again, coming back to the Arian formula and we estimate density. So you can see um, as the as this uh, parameter, the encounter rates increase, the density will increase for a, a given or a constant parameters in, in this uh, in day range and detection zone. And also as day range increase, so the movement is higher for a constant parameter or a given parameters of encounter rates and uh, detection zone, the density will uh, decrease. So, okay, so we have a direct and positive uh, relations in between encounter rate and density, and we have an in indirect uh, relationship between uh, movement, the range, and density. So uh, uh, I recommend to you to have a look to this paper, which uh, was published in 2012 in the Journal of Oil and Man Management, in which uh, the author describes some key ideas or assumptions about the, the random encounter method, okay? Because initially it caused uh, it was a little bit controversial. I know that I think that now it's more all this concept and so on and after many uh, field applications as we have uh, discussed in our review, uh, the methods is more accepted and is more clear. But if you are not familiar with the random encounter model, I recommend you to, or even with other uh, unmarked methods, I recommend you to have a look to, to this paper. And again, as Joaquin said, we have uh, in the in the observatory website many guidance and resources and so on. But just to a friendly remain uh, friendly reminder. And uh, for finish my presentation, uh, I think that the key concept that we should take for now is that in the observatory network. We are focused on the mammal community. We are not only focused in one species. We our, our focus is to estimate population density as many species as possible. So for that, we decide to work with uh, or to apply uh, unmarking methods. Locate the animals in the field of view or in the detection zone is the key uh, parameter for REM, but also for other unmarking methods. So we need to uh, put a special attention in how uh, we set the cameras that uh, and we will see this this field protocol in in my letter in my next talk but it's very important to uh, understand how we set the cameras to then or finally estimate the the location of the animals in the field of view and initially we are going to apply the REM in the study areas but again as I saw before as I said before uh, the the field design or the study design that we are going to apply allow us to apply other unmarking methods. So uh, with this slide, I finish and we can continue with the talks or if there are any question, I will be happy to to answer.